Do you guys remember this impossible part that we printed out of 316L stainless steel on our Trump True Print 2000? Well, we just cut it perfectly in half. take you guys through exactly how we made this happen on our Ona AB35 Wire EDM and I'm going to showcase what makes additive manufacturing technology revolutionary. <laughs> to cut our fluid mixer in half we're going to be using this brass wire that's about three times the size of a single human hair. So now we're gonna set up our part. We got our fixture here. We're gonna install our build plate with our fluid mixer attached to it. And we're gonna indicate everything in perfect. Now I snugged up the bolts on our fixture and I'm gonna indicate across these flats to make sure our part's oriented properly. Okay, so now we indicate in these flats and we're gonna take our indicator out, we're gonna thread our wire and then we're gonna use that to probe our part and find our origin. And what the wire is gonna do is gonna shoot a stream of water from this top guide down into the lower guide and then that's gonna guide our 10 thousandths diameter wire from this top guide into the lower guide and back down into the drive rollers underneath. So now to thread our wire, it's super simple. We just go over here to the control and we're gonna hit auto threading. It's gonna ask us if we wanna raise the door and we do. So we're gonna hit yes. And now our wire's threaded, we're ready to go. So to find our X position, we're gonna come into the control and we're gonna say edging. And then we wanna find in our X minus position. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna tap this icon to tell it to move in the X negative direction. First things first, we're gonna find our X position off the front face of our flange. So now our wire is moving towards that front face of that flange right there. And it's gonna to touch it a couple times and then it's gonna tell us exactly where that edge is. We're on the positive side, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put positive five thousandths as our value in X, which is half the diameter of our wire. So now that we found our X location, we're gonna come over here to our program position, and we're gonna say positive .005. And now we're done with our X location. And then we wanna find in the Y positive direction, so we're gonna come down here and we're gonna select that icon, and that's gonna move our wire in Y positive. After that, we're gonna set our tolerance a little tighter. We want it to hold one ten thousandth of an inch accuracy. We're gonna type that in, and then we're ready to hit execute. So now our wire is moving closer towards our edge, and it's gonna to touch that edge a few times, and then it's gonna give us the exact location of that position. So now that we found our Y location in the positive direction, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna select this icon, and that's gonna find our Y position in the negative direction on the other side of our part. We're gonna come around our part and we're gonna find this edge right here. Now our wire is moving in the negative direction and it's gonna to touch that back face. After that, we can cut our wire and then we can move to the middle of our part for our Y origin for our program position. Now that we've picked up both our positive and negative locations in Y, we're gonna go ahead and cut our wire and then we're gonna use the middle function and we're gonna to move to the middle of those two locations and zero our Y. So now we've cut our wire, we're gonna go into our control and we're gonna hit our back arrow and then we're gonna go into our middle function. We wanna find the middle in Y, so we're gonna select this icon here and then we're gonna hit execute and it's gonna to move to the center point of our last two pickups in Y. So now our machine moved to our Y center point, so we're gonna come into our control and we're just gonna hit this here and that's gonna zero out our Y position. So now we need to set our Z and to do that, we're gonna set our Z just above the top of our fixture because we don't wanna be colliding with anything during any of our programs and we're gonna bring it down to where it's about four thousandths above the top of our fixture so that we can have as optimal a flushing as possible but still not worry about colliding with anything in our setup. Okay, so now that we found our Z height, we're gonna go into our control and we're just gonna zero out our Z. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna go to MDI and then we're gonna traverse to zero, which is where our program is going to start from. So we hit our traverse to zero. Now we've successfully found our X, Y, and Z locations and we've moved our machine into position to start our program. Now we're gonna cut this guy in half and we're gonna see what's inside. I can't wait. 
Now I pulled up our program to cut our part in half. The only thing missing is the tech file, which is the most important part of the program. We can assign that in the control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to this line on our program, and then we're gonna hit this load tech file button. And that's gonna pop up this screen, and then we're just gonna enter some of these values in here. So for our thickness, we got 1.6. So for our material, on this job, we're gonna be running steel, but as you can see, they have aluminum and titanium and tungsten carbide and a lot of different tech files for you to choose from. So we're picking steel. After that, we're gonna go into the wire. Same thing with the wire. You got a lot of different options, different sizes, different coatings, things like that. For us, we're doing 10 thousandths diameter brass. So we select that option. So now we're gonna input our VDI, which is a texture standard that's gonna help us select the right tech file for a good finish. For this, we wanna select 17 VDI. What's cool about Ona is we have poor flushing conditions in this situation because we have a big build plate, but a small part. So they've actually developed tech files for poor flushing. As you can see down here, we have a lot of options to choose from. We're gonna select poor flushing conditions, which would be this option. So now we have all of our tech files listed down below. So we want a rough and two finish passes. So we're gonna select this tech file here. We're gonna hit select. And as you can see, it inputted that tech file into our program. So now all we have to do is hit save and we're ready to run our program. Before we run our program, we can do a couple of checks. We can go in here to execution. One, we can do a graphic simulation. To do that, I go into graphic simulation and I can hit play. As you can see, it's a very difficult program. It's just a straight line. If we go into 2D, you can really see how complex it is because it's just a straight line. If you want to take it one step further, you can actually come down here and you can do a dry run and that's going to move the machine around and simulate all the movements that'll happen during the program, but it won't actually thread the wire and it won't cut the part whatsoever. Now the time has come to cut this bad boy in half. I can't wait, let's hit go. During the cut, our wire isn't actually touching our part. Instead, a very precise spark is jumping across the gap between the wire and the workpiece to burn the material away. So as you guys can see, our program is running right now. We're actually currently cutting our fluid mixer in half. And one of the things you'll notice is our part is fully submerged in water. And you might think electricity and water, that doesn't really mix, but this is deionized water. So what that means is the water is filtered through a resin bottle and it's gonna take out all the minerals and salts and anything that might be conductive. So now this water allows us to pass current through it because there's nothing in here that's conducting electricity. So I can actually put my hand in this water and I don't get shocked at all because it's not conductive. It's pretty cool. Now we're cutting through the base of our part, leaving a tab at the end so I can easily remove our part when the program is finished. Alright guys, so we finished all of our cuts, our parts holding on by a 35 thousandths wide tab. Now we're just going to go ahead and break our part off and I'm going to show you guys how incredible the inside of this part is. Let's do it. Look at that. Man, that is beautiful. This actually is a perfect visual of how special 3D printing technology is. If you look at this tube specifically, you got a hole that starts right here and it goes through this tube, wraps underneath, and it comes out up here. 
That is insane. Look at the finish on that. I mean, our own AV35 handled that beautifully. We had poor flushing conditions and it handled it like a champ. So if you guys look real close, you might notice that some of our tubes fell out. We got a couple of gaps right here and we knew that was gonna happen, but you know, we wanted to see what was inside of our part. So we did it anyway, knowing that some of those tubes would fall out. As soon as we printed this part, I wanted to know what the inside looked like, so we cut it in half, and I think it's a perfect example of what makes 3D printing special. I love the combination of EDM and 3D printing. I had a lot of fun cutting this part in half and revealing what's inside. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have some really good ideas on what we should do next, please drop them in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.